Hello Pineapple Mamas, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be going over your baby's changing table and dresser organization. I'm gonna show you the best way to organize everything so that you can keep the clothes organized and so that you can keep everything up here within arm's reach. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. My channel my name is Ashley Nicole and my channel is all about helping women through infertility and their journey to motherhood so without further ado let's get right into the video let's start off with the changing table so the most important part of the changing table is going to be the setup station let's go over what I recommend for you to have here so that you're not fumbling around while your baby's trying to escape their diaper change so first off I recommend having diapers up here it is good to have diapers in the drawer as well and I'll show you that later but having these really accessible is better when you have another dirty diaper in your other hand. I put some diapers up here in a basket and then I put two different kinds, her day ones and then her nighttime ones. The night ones I really do recommend because they do hold a lot more for a long period of time and keep your baby dry in turn keeping them away from diaper rash. Speaking of diaper rash, I always have a diaper rash cream on here. I use Dustin and I really love this one. I have used other brands. However, this one I think is more efficient and it really does keep her dry. So I always keep that handy. I also have an all-purpose balm on here. This is really good for dry patches or just little scrapes or anything like that. And then behind that, I have some baby oil. I honestly use baby oil for massage. I also use it for cleaning her belly button because she has an innie, so it makes it a lot easier to clean. I also have baby powder. This is also really good for keeping them dry. You definitely wanna do this in a ventilated area. I would probably say put the powder on your hands separate from your baby so that they don't breathe it in because they are very susceptible at a young age for anything that they breathe in to their little lungs. And then the next two things I have are lotions. I do have a scented lotion. I don't use that yet, but I do use Vanny Cream. Vanny Cream Baby doesn't have any scents. It also is hyperallergenic, free of parabens. My pediatrician actually recommended this and the dermatologist I used to work for always use Vanny Cream. So honestly, it's a great product. I recommend that. And then I think this is one of the best ones is Aquaphor. This is another ointment that is just really good for everything. We use this as our diaper rash cream quite a bit for a long time. And I think it works really well to keep them dry. It's also just really good for anything. If they have dry lips or if they have like a dry patch, um, any kind of injuries or injection sites, it's just really good for everything. Honestly, I recommend you getting the Aquaphor baby. And then of course we have our wipes. So I keep these wipes up here and I constantly am refilling them. I wanna make sure that I have them nice and handy. I do close them so that the moisture stays good, but most of the time I do forget to actually close it and they really don't dry up. So moving on to the actual changing pad itself, on here what I have is a changing pad that has been added to this base and I also have a changing pad cover along with a changing pad pad, I guess you would call it. <laughs> so all of these are essential. Yes, the changing pad is waterproof. However, that's really just meant for its durability and to keep it clean. I would suggest you get both of these items. You wanna cover the changing pad and you also wanna cover something on top of it. If you use these little munchkin pads, these are so great because if you get them dirty, if the baby accidentally pees while you're changing and you don't have a diaper underneath or if you, know, you get a little bit of number two on it, then all you have to do is pick up the pad and then put it in the dirty clothes. The other thing is I really like the changing pad cover because baby is always gonna be touching everything and drooling, possibly spitting up, so other parts of the pad also get dirty. I recommend always washing this at least once a week whenever you're gonna be changing it and having multiples of it. So I would personally recommend a base to go on top of your dresser so that you can keep everything nice and organized. This is just my personal preference because I like that it has two separate areas and it has one area for baby and the other area for all the products that you need to change the diaper etc so I would recommend one of these if however you don't get one of these that's perfectly fine too I would probably just secure the changing pad to the table somehow there are changing pads that you can buy that actually are already secure when you put them on top because they're not like this sliding material I'll link those down below along with all of these products Okay, let's move on to the dresser. So the first drawer I wanna show you is the one directly underneath all the products. What I have in here is additional products. So in here, you're gonna see that we have some Q-tips and we also have some boogie wipes. 
I don't keep the boogie wipes on top because I use them a lot less. I use the Honest wipes for her diaper change and the boogie wipes are actually just for cleaning up her face and her hands. I also have her thermometer along with some of her nose suction items. And in this little cubby that I bought on Amazon, I have some of her grooming kits as well as her toothpaste and um, another thermometer. And then on the other little cubby, I have her medicines. Anything like uh, Tylenol and gas straps, ripe water, etc. you name it. And in the back, I have extra of those pads that I was talking about for the changing table by Munchkin. And next to that, I have her grooming and safety kit along with some Frida Baby, um, what are these called? Gas passers, but I haven't used those recently. On to the next drawer. Well, in this drawer, like we were talking about before, I have extra diapers. These are solely so that I can just keep restocking those diapers and I always have them on hand because you would be surprised how many times I've run out of these diapers and had to run into the closet, strap my baby in, etc. So I really recommend having a drawer with backup diapers. And in this drawer, I have her daytime diapers and her nighttime diapers that I separated with a little divider that I got on Amazon. Okay, so for her next drawer, this one starts to go into clothes. So this one has pants and shorts. I've also separated these by a divider. As you can see, I have them labeled. I like to put the sizes that I have in the drawer so that one, I don't get them mixed up and two, I keep it nice and organized. This is especially good when they are constantly changing out of clothes in the first three months, every three months versus every six months. And I do like to be a little extra and color coordinate as best I can. Okay, let's move down to the next drawer. Wow, that's a mess. Let's clean it up. That's better. Okay, so on here I also have them labeled. Basically what I like to do is keep six months worth of sizes here so that that way, whenever she outgrows the size, I already have the next one up. Also, if you've already tried clothes on babies, you understand that they don't always run true to size. So it's good to always have a smaller size and a larger size because sometimes I use both. Right here you can see I have three to six months and six to nine months as well as six to 12. There's only a few of six to 12, but some of the 12 sizes do actually fit her already. And she's already six months, but she grew out of the three to six month. I know that's super confusing, but this way I keep it nice and organized so that I can later put it away organized as well for the next baby. And I always use dividers in here too. When she was a newborn, since her clothes were smaller and she was growing out of them quicker, I actually used two dividers. All right, moving on to this drawer next to it. In here, I have pajamas. I don't have a lot of pajamas in here because most of them need to be washed. Every time she uses a pajama at night, we actually just end up throwing it in the dirty clothes for a wash because the diaper does somewhat make the pajama stinky, so I don't like her wearing that all day. So I also have these separated by sizes because again, this one also runs differently for her. Okay, so for the bottom drawer, what I have in here are blankets and sheets. I have the thin receiving blankets as well as her lovies, her crib sheets, and her diaper changing sheets, as well as some really thin blankets. Moving on to the last drawer. This drawer is more for all of her bath time stuff. So in here I have, sorry, that's my daughter having some fun with her dad. So in here I have towels, her washcloths, as well as her swaddles and her sleep sacks. All right, mamas, I really hope that you liked this video and you got some great organization tips from it. If you have any questions about organizing, just let me know in the comments down below and I'm happy to answer them. You can also go to pineapplemamas.com and email me there. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and as always, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button because I would really like for you to join our tribe of Pineapple Mamas where we are women supporting other women. And as always, mama, stay hopeful and stay happy. I'll see you in my next one.